How to add keyframes on a transform track with C++ in Unreal. And actually, I'm saying transform track, but it's pretty similar to add a keyframe on a transform track compared to another type of track. But there's still a few little things here and there that are different from a track to another, so today we're going to focus on a transform track. So let's get to it. But before we start, today's video is going to reuse some code we wrote in the video 30 of the series, so I recommend to go see that one, but if you don't want to, here is the code. So, as usual, here we are in a completely empty header file, except the four function we're going to create today, and also a little forward declaration right here, the UMovieScene section. And for the two first function, it's actually the function specific for the transform keyframe, so we're gonna have to add the transform keyframe and also the remove transform keyframe. And those two functions are going to call the other functions that we have at the bottom, which are a bit more generic, but we're gonna look at them a little bit later. Let's start with the two first functions. So they add the transform keyframe, for that one you just have to feed it the path of the level sequence and the actor that should already have a transform track and also a transform section attached to it. So here is the transform section in which you want to add the keyframe, obviously. And then you have the frame number where you want to place the keyframe in the section, the transform, so the value you want to apply to that keyframe, and finally the interpolation of that keyframe. So do you want it to be constant, linear, or cubic? These are all the inputs for the add transform keyframe, and then the function is going to add a keyframe to the transform section that is inside the transform track in the level sequence in the actor, whatever. It's going to add the keyframe for you. And then you have the remove a transform keyframe. That one is going to be a bit simpler, but you still have to provide the path of the level sequence, the actor, the section index in which the keyframe is, and also the frame number where the frame is. So there's still a few inputs there, but you'll see that you need all of them because adding a keyframe is not that easy. So good. These are the two transform specific function. Now let's take a look at the two more generic function that we have right here at the bottom. So we have first the add keyframe to double channel, uh, but why do we need that function actually? because we already have a function that adds a keyframe to a transform section. Why do we need to add a keyframe to a double channel? Well, it's because the transform section is actually built of nine channel, nine double channel. The double is the type of variable that is used by the channel. If you don't know what a double is, it's pretty similar to a float. It's a number. Just think about it. It's, it's a number. It's applied to a channel. And inside the transform section, there's nine channel. There's three for the location, so x, y, and z. Three for the rotation, pitch, yaw, and roll. And then three for the scale, x, y, and and Z once again. So there's nine channel inside the transform section. So since we are going to call this function nine times for all the different channels that are inside the section, I think it's better if we have it inside a nice function instead of duplicating code here and there. And also you're going to be able to call this function for all the other type of track that are using a double channel. So that function is going to be really useful in the future, I'm pretty sure. So good. For that function, you need to feed it the section that contains all the different channels and also the index of the channel onto which you want to add the keyframe. So do you want the channel zero, which is the location X? Do you want the channel one, which is the location Y? You can decide which channel you want to use. And then you have the information of the keyframe you want to create. So the frame number, the value of the keyframe and the interpolation of the keyframe, obviously. This was for the function to add a keyframe to a double channel. And then we have the last function, the remove keyframe from channel. And for that one, same thing, you have to provide the section, the channel index, and the frame number, and the function should be able to delete the keyframe for you. That's it. So good. That was for the header file. Now it's time to jump in the CPP. And as usual, we're going to start with the includes. And the first one is going to be the code of the video 30 of the series to be able to retrieve the transform section from the level sequence. And then all those includes uh, to be able to do the work that we need today. So first, we need the level sequence and the movie scene and also the movie scene section. These are pretty straightforward because we want to modify them. And then we have the more specific thing. So we need the movie scene 3D transform section because we want to modify the transform section that is inside the level sequence. And then we have the movie scene channel proxy, which is going to help us retrieve the channel from the section. And then we finally have the channel itself, the movie scene double channel, which are the channels that are used inside the transform section. So good. We have all those includes and they are in three different modules. So the movie scene, movie scene tracks and level sequence. So let's go see in the build.cs file, make sure that we have all of those. We have the level sequence, we have the movie scene and the movie scene tracks. So good, my project should compile, but if you are missing some of them, make sure to add them inside the build.cs file, otherwise it will not compile. Perfect. Let's go back in the CPP and focus on the first function to add a transform keyframe. And to do that, the first step is going to be to retrieve the section in which you want to add the keyframe. So the UMovieScene 3 transform section, the section that we have right here, is going to be retrieved using the code from the video 30. So get transform section from actor in level sequence. You feed it the path of the level sequence and the actor and the section index, and that's going to give you the section in which you want to add your keyframe. Good, you have the section. 
but it's possible that the section doesn't exist. So I'm just going to leave a little check right here to make sure that we're not trying to add a keyframe on a section that doesn't exist. But if the section exists, which it should, then we'll be able to add keyframes onto it. And that's what we're going to do right here. But first, before doing that, we're going to make sure to remove the previous keyframes that were on that frame number in that section, because it's possible that you added a keyframe before and you added it to the frame, uh, let's say 50, and then you want to add it again, 50, and then 50, and 50, and 50, because you want to replace the previous keyframes. If you do that in the editor, that's awesome. Unreal deletes the previous keyframe for you. But if you do it by code, Unreal thinks you know what you're doing, so it's not going to delete the keyframe for you. So if you're adding keyframe on the frame 50 over and over and over, Unreal is not going to delete the previous keyframe, so you're just going to end up with a bunch of random keyframes on the same frame, and that might cause some issues, obviously. So what we're going to do is, before adding a new keyframe, remove the previous keyframe. So we're just going to call the little function that we have right here, fitting it the same variable, so the level sequence path, actor, section index and frame and that function should remove the keyframe for you if it exists so good now that we know that we have an empty section and we're ready to add a keyframe onto it it's time to add it so to add a keyframe we actually need to add nine keyframes as i said before there's nine channel in the transform section one for the x y and z of the location your pitch roll of the rotation and then x y and z of the scale so we need to add nine keyframes not one nine and that's what we're going to do right here using the add keyframe to double channel the section is going to be the section that we found at the top. And then for the index of the channel, we want to use the index corresponding of the value we want to apply. So by default, in a transform section, the index 0 correspond to the location x, the index 1 correspond to the location y, the index 2 correspond to the location z. So we have to make sure that the index of the channel matches the value you want to apply to your actor, obviously. So for the location, we're going to use the channel 0, 1, and 2, and then the location x, y, and z. And then we also need to provide the frame number and the key interpolation we want to apply to that keyframe. And that's going to create three keyframes for you for the location of your actor. But now you also want to modify the rotation of your actor. So you're going to have to do the same thing. You're going to need to add three keyframes for the roll, pitch, and yaw of your actor using the transform that you receive as input, obviously. For the channel indexes, you want to use the channel 3, 4, and 5 because these are the indexes of the channels that are applying the rotation to your actor. So channel 3 correspond to the roll, channel 4 correspond to the pitch, and channel 5 correspond to the yaw. So make sure that they match, otherwise it will cause a few issues here and there. And then you have to also provide the frame and the interpolation of your keyframe. And you also want to do the same thing for the scale right here. For the scale, same thing. You also need to provide the frame, the value you want to apply. So X, Y, and Z of the scale, the interpolation, and and finally, for the channel index, you want to use the channel 6, 7, and 8, which are the three channels controlling the scale of your actor. And actually, that's it. That's all you're adding keyframes to a transform channel. Uh, here, I'm just going to add a little bit more information to the user to see if it was a success or not, based on if I was able to add keyframes using my add keyframe to double channel function right here. That's just a little bit more information. You don't have to do that. Good. So that's it to add a keyframe to my channel. Now it's time to remove keyframes that are on the channel. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And to remove a keyframe, it's going to start the same way as the previous function. We have to first start by finding the section that is inside the level sequence. So my section is right here. I'm going to find it using the get transform section from actor in level sequence. Same thing as before. And we're going to make sure that the section is valid. Now that we know that the channel is valid, it's time to remove the keyframe. And we're going to do the same exact thing we did in the previous function. And it is to call the functions nine time one for each of the channels that are inside this section. So here I'm going to start by removing the keyframes of the location. So the channel 0, 1, and 2 using obviously the frame number that we receive as input and also the section that we just found. And that's going to delete the keyframes that are assigned to the location x, y, and z. Then we're going to do the same thing for the rotation. So remove the keyframe in the channel 3, 4, and 5. And then same thing for the scale. So remove the keyframe assigned to the channel 6, 7, and 8. And that's going to remove all the keyframes that are assigned in the transform section. And I'm just going going to return a little bit more information to the user because that's all we had to do to remove keyframes from the section. But actually, you can see that nothing is done yet. We didn't do any work. We just called the same function nine times twice. So yeah. That's not really doing anything. Now it's time to code the real function, the ones that are doing the real job. So let's scroll down a little bit more and we're gonna start by adding a keyframe to a double channel. And to do that, I'm gonna start by making sure that my section I receive as input is actually valid. So just make sure that the section is valid. And then from that section, you can find the channel that you want to modify. In my case, the channel type that I want is the movie scene double channel, obviously, because we want to add a double keyframe. So in my section, I can access the get channel proxy, which is going to let me look for the channel that I want 
based on the channel index that I receive as input. So do I want a channel uh, 0, 1, 2 for the location, 3, 4, 5 for the rotation, etc. So I'm just going to look for that channel and I'm going to cast it to the movie scene double channel because that's the type of channel that I want. And that should give me my channel onto which I want to add my keyframe. Here I'm just going to make sure that my channel is valid because it's possible that it's not. And if we're sure that it is valid, now it's time to add a keyframe onto it. But before we do that, we actually have to convert the frame that we receive as input to a frame number because the way the sequencer works, it works in ticks and not in frame numbers. So we have to find out how many ticks there are per frame. So here in this case, I'm going to load my level sequence using the outermost object of my section because my section is part of my level sequence. So the outermost object of that section is actually going to be the level sequence. So here you can just get the outermost object, cast it to a level sequence, and that's going to give you the level sequence. And once you have that level sequence, you can do that little bit of code right here just to calculate how many ticks there are per frame in the level sequence at the moment. That's variable, so you have to calculate it every time. And after you know that information, you can easily multiply the amount of ticks there are per frame by your frame number you receive as input to determine the frame number, the real frame number that you want to use when working with the level sequence. So that's going to be the frame number you are going to use to add the keyframe inside the channel. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit more and now it's time to add the keyframe in the channel. And to do that, well, there's three functions we can call. We can call the add cubic key, add linear key and add constant key. They are all doing the same thing, but they are applying a different interpolation to the keyframe. So based on the key interpolation you receive as input, you either want to create a cubic key, a linear key, or a constant key, but all the other inputs of those functions are the same. You just have to provide the frame number and the value you want to apply to that key, and that's it. The keyframe is going to be created in the level sequence, but there's just one last little thing we have to do, and it is to tell the section to modify itself to actually refresh the section. So we have to tell him, okay, you just got modified. Can you refresh, please? Otherwise, it will not refresh and you will not see your keyframe. So the code will work, but the keyframe will not be visible in the level sequence, and that's not fun. So here I'm just going to tell my station to refresh itself, and that's it. We just added a keyframe in a double channel. Good, now it's time for the last function, the remove keyframe from channel. So here I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more. And the first step is still going to be the same thing. We have to make sure that the section is valid, obviously. Retrieve the channel that we want to modify using the channel index we receive as input. So in the section, we call the get channel proxy to retrieve the channels that we want. So I'm just going to retrieve a simple movie scene channel. So using the channel index, I'm going to retrieve that channel right here. It's going to feed it inside my variable. And if the channel is valid, then we'll be able to use that channel to delete our keyframe. But before we do that, it's the same as the previous function, we have to calculate how many ticks there are per frame and convert our frame number that we have right here into a real frame number that uses the ticks value instead of just the frame. Here I'm loading my level sequence, same as previous function, calculating the ticks per frame and then setting the frame number. And once we know that frame number, now we can finally delete our keyframe. But actually, we can't really, because there's no function to delete a keyframe using the frame number directly. Instead, what we have to do is retrieve all the keyframes that are at that frame number right here. So retrieve all the keyframe and then and we can delete them. It's a two-step process, but whatever, that's easy to do, so let's do it. I'm just going to ask my channel to get all my keys. The keys that I want are the keys that are at that frame number, so the frame number we just calculated before, so all the keys that are at that location in the channel, and that's going to push all my key and dolls inside that little variable that I have right here, my array of key and dolls, and once I have that variable set properly and containing all the keys that I want to delete, I can simply ask my channel to delete them. So channel, delete keys, delete the key and dolls that I just found at that location in the channel. It's a two-step process, but it's not too bad. So good. And one last thing before we're done with the code, it's actually to tell the section to refresh itself once again. So section modify is going to tell the section that it was just modified and it has to refresh itself. And now I can just return a little bit more information to the user and it's time to jump in Unreal to see if it works. Oh, actually, it looks like I didn't test this properly. And I just realized that actually the get channel right here really wants to know which type of channel you're looking for. And in our case right now, we're looking for the double channel. So I'm just going to convert my variable right here from the movie scene channel to the movie scene double channel. And that should fix the issue that I had in Unreal two seconds ago. So now it's time to go test this for real. So here I am in Unreal in a pretty empty level, actually not that empty. I have my wire right here, which is inside my level sequence. And that wire also have three transform tracks, uh, to actually three transform section right here. So these transform section have been created using the code of the previous video. So if you want to see how I did it, you can go see that one. But in our case, we're just going to use those sections to add keyframes inside them. 
to make sure that the code actually works. So this is my level, this is my level sequence, and we're going to add keyframes using a little user interface as usual. So here I can provide the path of my level sequence, the index of the transform section in which I want to add my keyframe, the frame number that I want to create. So the frame 50, 20, 75, doesn't really matter. The interpolation I want to apply to that keyframe, and then the transform I want to apply to that keyframe. So the location X, Y, and Z, the rotation X, Y, and Z, and finally the scale X, Y, and Z. And then I have two buttons to either add a key or remove a key. And if I go in my graph, we can see that if I'm adding a keyframe, there's a lot of parameters. Yeah, but it's actually not that complicated. It's just taking all the information from the user interface in which I have a lot of spin boxes. So that's why that happens. But here you have to provide the path of the level sequence, my wire that is in my level, the section index, the frame number, and then I have my location, my rotation, and then my scale. And finally, I have the interpolation I want to apply to my keyframe. And when I remove my keyframe, when I click on that button, I'm going to remove my transform keyframe. In that case, I'm just providing the path of the level sequence and my warrior, and then the section index and the keyframe I want to delete delete and that should delete the key for me. So let's go see if it works. I'm going to run my editor utility widget right here. You can see that I have my wire and I don't have any keyframes in my level sequence at all. So no keyframes at all. I'm going to add a new keyframe to let's say frame, I don't know, 25. And then I'm just going to add a key. Okay, I have a key right here at the frame 25. That's good. I can remove my key. Add key, remove key, add key, remove key. That's good. You can add as many keys as you want. That's pretty good. Now I'm just going to add a different transform to make sure that it works. So let's say between frame 25 and 44, I'm going to, let's say, move my wire a little bit, move it up a little bit, and then scale it. Because right now it's pretty small. So let's scale the wire, add key right here. So now if I scrub, I don't have anything. And then in between those keys, here we go. My wire is moving and scaling. Yes, it seems to work. Perfect. Now let's see if I try to add a rotation to it. So I'm just going to add the rotation, I'm going to place it at frame, let's say 63, add a key. Okay, so now I'm going to scroll. Okay, oh, it broke right here. Oh, and that's because my section is too small for my keyframe. My keyframe is all the way here. So now I can expand my section a little bit. And we can see that if I expand my section, it overs that key all the way over there. So now it works all the way here. And we can see that my warrior is moving the way I set it inside my keys. Good. Uh, actually, it's fighting against the other section. So I can just move the section a little bit. And now we can see, yeah, here we go. Now the warrior is moving properly. Perfect. And actually on that topic, it's now time to test those two sections right here. So I'm going to add a keyframe into the section one. And I'm also going to change the interpolation to let's say one, and I'm going to move my keyframe to let's say frame 69. There we go. Add a keyframe right here. You can see I added a keyframe in the section one. I can remove it, add it, no problem. That also works. And you can also see that the keyframe has a different interpolation because it's a triangle instead of a circle. So that seemed to work. And then I can do the same thing. I can change the interpolation once again, scroll a little bit later, and then change the scale. Why not? Add a keyframe. And now that's going to add a constant key inside my second section. And now if I scroll, you can see that now my key it should be constant and actually it should only affect the next key so I'm going to add a new one right here I'm going to scale it a little bit bigger add a key there we go oops it's a little bit too far come back a little bit more here we go so now it should be constant and then jump here we go. So the constant keyframe also worked. Perfect. And same thing for the last section. I can add a key in there. So I can just add a key randomly right here. You can see it works. And then I can put it a little bit later. Here we go. So now you know how to add and remove keyframes from your transform track in the level sequence. And that's going to be it for today's video. So I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.